let's just start by uh, with a word of prayer. Let's bow our heads and uh, remember who we are coming to worship this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we are gathered together here in your name, Lord, and that we know that you are in the midst. We thank you that whatever the pressures and the strains of this week and whatever this week has brought, that we come here together as your people. We are adopted into your family, Lord, we are your children. And we pray that you'll still our hearts and our minds and help us to focus on you for this, this next uh, period of time, Lord. We pray that you would speak to us through the worship and through the word, Lord, and through each other. Uh, may we build each other up and exhort each other to good works as well. We pray this in your name. Amen. 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 Right. Uh, this is my first time doing the notices Salad Church, and Rob thought he would fill a page of A4 for me. <laughs> um, so I will be doing a quiz at the end, uh, if you can remember all of the dates and everything that's happening when. Okay, so Phil, uh, you may notice, is here today. Um, he is preaching down in London this weekend, so keep him in your prayers. Um, Don Kent's funeral, uh, for those of you who know Don Kent, uh, it will be at the Shrewsbury Crematorium this coming Monday, so that's tomorrow, um, at 11.30am. So I believe anyone is welcome to attend that happening tomorrow. Um, life groups uh, are on again this week. Um, do encourage you, if you're not in a life group, I have to say I started going to a life group and uh, not uh, in our old church down in Oxfordshire, and it was one of the most transformative things uh, that really happened to me in my spiritual walk. So, I do encourage you if you aren't in a life group, please do see Richard Ellis, um, and he can sort you out with a life group. Uh, they meet various times on various days, so I'm sure there's one that you can make. Foundry is in the town hall this week, and it says they are making pizzas. So, I don't know if it's Found you only for youth, or can just anybody rock up for pizza? Are they making pizzas for themselves or for the general public? Um, okay, so that's on this week. Um, your covenant partner agreement, uh, please could you hand, hand them back in as soon as possible? You can give them to Sue. Give, there she is, waving at the back. Don't really turn and stare at Sue, so uh, you can give them to her as soon as possible. Uh, Bright Sparks party, you've heard about it already, it's on the 14th of February, um, so Rachel's going to tell us a little bit more about that later on as well, and then so the 14th of February is Bright Sparks, that's the half term week on that, Sunday the 18th of February is our Believers Baptism service, I don't know if we've been able to source a swimming pool for this hall just yet, but um, uh, we know, oh there we go, it's all booked in, so uh, that's on the 18th of February. Um, which is also my birthday, so it's a double reason to come to church. <laughs> so see Rob if you want to be involved and want to get baptised. Um, the 10th birthday celebration, uh, that is on the Salad Church, uh, that is going to be at 3pm on the 17th of March here in the Town Hall. Uh, so the Sunday service Saturday will be at 3pm, so don't turn up at 10 because you'll well, you could turn up and help set up, I imagine, for 3 p.m. But, um, but the actual celebration will start at 3 p.m. on the 17th of March. We have uh, these little invitation cards. Uh, so if you can take those, there's some on the tables. I think there's some more at the back. So please do take those with you and feel free to invite anyone uh, who can come to that. Uh, also, if you've got any old pictures from over the years of the Salad Church, then I believe the instruction is either send them on WhatsApp group or send them to the pastor's email address. Um, okay. Uh, lastly, uh, a bit of sad news. You may have heard that the head of Ellesmere College passed away yesterday, uh, or this week sometime. So uh, he was married to the mayor and uh, he'd been there, I believe it was 28 years that he'd been um, the head there at Ellesmere College, so uh, it's going to affect a lot of people, including some of our congregation here. So do be praying for Ellesmere College, uh, and we'll pray for them a little bit later as well. Okay. Uh, so that is all of the notices for this morning. Um, so let's just, uh, if we can all stand, I'm just going to read a psalm as we begin, and then the worship team are going to lead us in worship. 
Psalm 99 says, The Lord reigns. Let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth quake. The Lord is great in Zion. He is exalted above all the peoples. Let them praise your great and awe-inspiring name. He is holy. So let's praise the name of our God this morning.
carrying us. We thank you, Lord, that we can always come to you. You've got hope in you, Lord, and I just praise you for that. Praise you for the strength that you give us every day. We're going to continue singing, yet not I, but for Christ in me. He's the reason that we can get through these things. He's the reason, whatever's going on, he's always with us. Let's sing.
please be seated. Okay, I think next Rachel is going to come. Where is Rachel? She's going to come up and talk with us. Thank you, Nathan. I, I am. I'm coming to the front, but I'm in a bit of a state because I've lost something. Uh, I'm sure it's probably in, ha in this handbag, but you know, ladies, what it's like when you've got a big handbag. Everything goes to the bottom. Right, I've got my Bible, I've got some tissues. Hmm. A bit random, a bit random. Oh, pig, that's even more random as well. Oh, my diary. Now, I did want that because I want to write down all those dates that Nathan gave me. Oh, dear me. So much going on, isn't there? What else have I got? Now, oh, my glasses case, but I haven't got my glasses. Where are they? <laughs> Gary, have I left them with you? No, oh, dear, dear. Some chocolate coins left over from Christmas. Might need those during the sermon. Oh, crumbs. <laughs> Children, can anyone help me find my glasses? <laughs> anyone seen them? Yeah. Where are they? <laughs> that is always happening. Now I need a pen. Anybody? Anybody got a pen? Anyone see a pen? Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> now I can write down my dates. Now. Oh dear me. Talk about losing things. I spend ages in my life looking for things, whether it's car keys, mostly it's glasses, but all sorts of things, I don't know about you. But I'm supposed to be up here telling you about the Bright Sparks party. February half term, Wednesday afternoon, and children, without giving too much away, the theme of it is lost and Found. Now there are some very good stories in the Bible about things being lost, but spoiler alert, I am not going to tell you about them this morning. Come to Bright Sparks Party at Ellesmere Football Club and you'll be able to hear some of them and have lots of fun with games and crafts and friends and yeah, it's going to be great. Sign up please. Get a form for online or from Sue or from the shop. But I wonder, children, anybody able to come out to the front and help me find something else? Anybody coming up? <laughs> come on, Phoebe. Come on, Lizzie. Ethan and John, do you want to come? Mia, do you want to come and help me find? I've got to find five pieces of paper, yellow paper. And in that last song, I had a panic because I couldn't see one of them, but I've seen them all now, so I'm all right. Okay. Can you help me find some yellow pieces of paper with writing on? They're all at this part of the church. Go, go, go! You just pull them off carefully, very carefully. We've got three, we've got four, we've got one more to get. Over by the musician who's busy. Okay, now then. We need to sort them out into a sentence. So let's have a quick look. While they're having a look at them, I need to also say something to the bigger kids, as Rob would say, about bright sparks. Am I on the camera? Am I standing in the wrong place? Here we go. So, if you would like to help with this great fun adventure, um, please speak to either Sue or myself if you want to be part of the team. And the other thing that I'm speaking to all of you, this is perhaps the most important thing you can do, is to pray about it. We need prayer about children signing up, we need prayer about all the practical arrangements, we need prayer about safety and fun on the day. So please join us in that. Right then, it's how we're we doing. So that's the one with the capital letter. So that needs to go first. So this is you can hold that one. See? Yeah. What have you got next? The Lord. Can you hold that with the other hand? See the Lord. That's what the hand's over. That's it. While. And then if you swap with me, yeah. Now we've got a sentence. Let's see. You can hold it up high and we can read it. It says, Seek the Lord while he may be. 
them and he has been with them ever since and he's transformed their lives. So in the Bible it says, seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. So when you're looking for things, perhaps you're not as useless as me about using things, also remember this verse, that we should seek the Lord, we must try and find out about him, come to church, talk to other people, read the Bible and see if we can find him for ourselves. Thank you very much for being good finders. Would you like to go and sit back down? Thank you very much. Oh, I was going to go for those coins now. <laughs> if she's forgetting things, she might not notice. <laughs> Father, we do thank you for bringing us here together this morning. Not just together as a group of people, but as a group of your people, your church. We thank you, Lord, for the freedom that we have to do that, to be able to express our faith, to come together publicly, to even advertise the fact that we're here to encourage others to come publicly. That we don't have to do that privately, hidden. Lord, we have that great privilege. And I pray, Lord, that you would help us to remember what a privilege that is, to not lose sight of that fact. As we come together this morning, I pray that you would be with us, that you would be amongst us, that we would honour you in our attitude, in our hearts, where you listen, with our ears, our hearts, and our whole being. But not just this morning, but we would also honour you as we leave here later, as we go about our day-to-day -day lives, in our homes, in our families, in our workplaces, in the communities in which we live. That we would continue to honour and worship you in every way. That we would shine the light of your gospel and good news, your salvation to all that are around. Lord, we thank you for the fact that you do want to shine your good news, your gospel, your salvation, your grace, your mercy to all people. We thank you for things like Bright Sparks. We thank you for the children that have come in the past. We thank you for those that are going to come in a few weeks' time. We thank you for the foundry. We thank you for all the other events that go on that draw, draw people into the church and draw people more important to you. I pray that you would be at work through each of these things, that you would just use them as vehicles for your gospel to reach people's hearts and to draw them closer to you. Or in a few weeks' time, uh, we have people here within this church being baptised, making that public declaration of their faith that they already have in you. We pray, Lord, for your protection upon them. As other things often try to distract, that you would draw close to them and encourage them and protect them. That we, as their friends in this fellowship together, would also be able to encourage and to protect and to guide and to disciple. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those that are ill church and with our community, the numbers are, are many. With all sorts of different illnesses and ailments that people are struggling with. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them and their families. That you would help us as individuals and as, together as a church to be able to support and to bless where we can. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for Don's family, whose funeral is tomorrow. And we pray for uh, Brendan Quignall, the headmaster of Elton College, who died on Friday after a very 
short and um, yeah, very short and quite with the cancer. A great surprise and shock to um, everybody. Just how quick it all was. Well, we lift his family to you, Anne, his wife, the mayor, Catherine and Hugh, his children. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them in this time of great loss. I pray that you would draw close to them, that you as their heavenly Father would take the place of the Father that they have lost. I pray, Lord, for the staff and the children of Eltonet College. Again, shocked by just how quickly this has happened. And the routine of the college this week is changing to try to give pupils and staff space to just process what's taking place. I pray Lord that you will be with them. And Brendan was also a man who had a huge impact on the community and had a great heart for people and community. My own family was the beneficiaries of his desire to move mountains to make things possible. With Ellesmere College being such a huge employer in, in Ellesmere, so many people, knowingly or not, have been impacted by his desire to bless. And looking further afield, we just pray also for just the political situation in our own country. We as a nation seem to be in such a mess. This isn't just your world, it's your universe, and you hold it all together. And sometimes we don't understand why things take place. But we pray that you will be at work to bring all things to your glory. And we praise you and honour you, even when we don't understand. In Jesus' name. Phoebe's going to come and give us our reading this morning, um, and then we're going to sing another song before we turn to the Word. Thank you, Phoebe.
very kind. I mean, it is my first time, but you know, I'm, I'm um, let's all stand together. We're going to sing uh, a song uh, before Rob brings the words to us. Um, and during the song, there's junior church, so uh, there's a, that's a good time to head out to that. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to sing Light to the World. <laughs> say the son of man is and, and they replied some say John the Baptist others say Elijah and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets but what about you said Jesus he asked who do you say that I am Simon Peter answered you're the Messiah the son of the living God Peter got it right didn't he but it's a question addressed to us all, not just to the disciples, to you and I. So who do you say Jesus is this morning? 
You see, Jesus came down from heaven, didn't he? And he made it very clear about who he was and is and, and always will be the Son of God. He amazed us with the signs, all the miracles, his miraculous acts that nobody else could possibly do except unless you were the Son of God. He astonished people with his words and he still does it through his word now in the Bible. Words that touch hearts and change lives. And these words can be trusted because he cannot lie. It's impossible for him to lie because he is perfect in every way, unlike us. So when he tells us in, in plain English who he is, when he refers to himself as the great I am, he's telling the truth and nothing but the truth. Last week we learned the truth that he is the bread of life. In John 6, verse 35. I am the bread of life, he says. And we learn that metaphorically speaking, when, when we feed on him by trusting and believing in him, then he promises eternal life. This week then, the one who cannot lie, Jesus, imparts another truth about just who he is. He says this, I am the light of the world. The second of the I am statements that's found in John's Gospel. So let's pray before we look at it together. We'll find those words, wonderfully read by Phoebe in John 8 verse 12. We're just going to look at that verse today. But let's pray. Oh, Spirit of the living God, would you fall afresh on all of us here this morning? Would you indeed, as we've just sung, open the eyes of our hearts to behold you as you proclaim just who you are? Lord, help us all just to fix our gaze upon you in, in these moments as we open your word. And would you speak? Would you illuminate our hearts afresh? We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So John 8 verse 12 says this. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So let's give this passage some context. What was going on here? Where was Jesus? And what was happening around him? But well, we know later on, as you read in John 8, from verse 20, verse 20 tells us this about where he is. It says this, he spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts. So he was in the temple, he was in the temple precincts. And most theologians believe that he was, he was, it was probably near the end of a very special feast, the Feast of the Tabernacles. A seven day feast, imagine that. Seven days of food and celebration, worshiping our God. I love it. Anyway, a seven-day feast that celebrated the Israelites' journey through the wilderness. And central to this celebration was referred to as, as the illumination of the temple that happened towards the end of the feast. This was a big light show. It involved the ritual lighting of four golden oil-fed lamps in the temple courts. These lamps were huge menorahs or candelabras, and they were 75 feet high. These are the original four candles. <laughs> 75 feet high. And they were lit in the temple at night to remind the people of the pillar of fire that had guided Israel in their wilderness journey. All night long they shone. This light, it is said, illuminated the entire city. The whole temple precinct was, was reverberating with life and with light. 
And for these individuals who were there, that this light was to them a reminder of the goodness of God in the past. It spoke to them of, of the way in which God had guided their ancestors from Egypt to the promised land. The Exodus. A pillar of cloud by day and a, and a, and a, and a pillar of fire bringing light at night. And they also, these people who were gathered in the temple, looked forward to the day when the Lord's servant would finally appear in Zion, the Messiah. And he would be a light to the Gentiles. And he would bring salvation to the ends of the earth. They were looking forward to, to the day when the prophecy of Isaiah would finally come true. In Isaiah 9, verse 2, which is a verse we often read at Christmas, it says this. Isaiah says this, the people walking in dark, seen a great light and those living in a land of the shadow a, a, a land of the shadow a light has dawned so they were all filled with an expectation the Messiah is going to come and then with an absolutely wonderful sense of, of, of timing Jesus, in their midst, he makes this stunning statement in the courts of the temple. I am the light of the world. Taking the opportunity of the circumstances presented. And what a claim he was making. And what perfect timing to make this statement. So that's the context. That's what was going on. So that's what was happening. But why, why was he saying this? What did it mean actually to those who were gathered in the temple? And uh, what does it mean this verse to us here this morning? So let's take a closer look at John 8 verse 12. He said, and I'll repeat it again. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness but we'll have the light of life. So firstly, only two points this morning, even though we've had about 15 minute intro. Only two points this morning. The world is dark and it needs what? It needs light, doesn't it? Jesus was, was inferring in this text that this world that we live in is dark. People are walking around living in the midst of what can often be and is a very dark world. A world that has been darkened by sin. From the very beginning when Adam and Eve fell foul to, to the snake's deviously dark temptation, Satan, eating the forbidden fruit of the, the tree of life in Genesis chapter 3. From that moment, known as the fall of mankind, a dark shadow has been cast over our human history. And the world is suffering from the effects of our turning our backs on our God. And evil, we know it, often prevails. In our news this week, um, we hear of the conflicts around the world and the rumours of, of further conflict potential war with Russia is hitting the headlines now. Conscription. I was just thinking, and we're probably old enough now to be in Dad's army when that came on. <laughs> Philip and Captain Maverick. I'll let, you, I'll let you guess who I've been. The conflict is all around us. The world that we live in does seem to be spiralling out of control. Or is it just me? On our own streets here in the UK, we're we're killing each other. The news this week was about knife crime, wasn't it? Just in our region, the West Midlands, there are over 15 stabbings a day. It's dark out there. And many are fearful of stepping outside their homes, especially at night. And then there's the problem of drugs in our streets. In our own town here in Ellesmere, our young people are being enticed into this dark and seedy world of drug trafficking. 
county lands. It's a big problem. And then there's the domestic violence issues that our police are struggling to respond to as there's just too many. Too many homes are, are fractured by relational anger and violence. And as a result, home life for the children can be quite dark. And on our, our social services, they can't cope with the fallout. And as we know as Christians, that as our society moves towards an increasingly secular approach, leaving the light of God out of the picture, then this is only ever going to get worse, get darker. Because the culture is trying to extinguish the goodness of our God. The prophet Isaiah was right when he said in Isaiah 60 verse 2, See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness over the peoples. So the world we live in can be very dark. And it needs light, doesn't it? It needs Jesus. And the good news so that was the bad news, and I can see you're all very depressed now. <laughs> the good news is that his light is here. And it cannot be distinguished. Extinguished. The good news is that the darkness cannot overcome his light. Again, read by Phoebe. John 1, verses 4 and 5. In him, talking about Jesus, was life. And that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it, and it never will. The good news is this, this light came down from heaven on that very first Christmas. Our hope, our hope, our light is found in the light of he brings light and life and peace and salvation in the midst of our dark world. And he invites us all to turn to his light, his truth. He is the true light who came into the world to save sinners like you and I, to rescue us from the dark. Even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. The psalmist writes of him in, in Psalm 36, verse 9 In his light we shall see light. In his light we shall see light. And this verse is so true. When we come to the light of life, that is Jesus, when we come to him in faith, Life begins to make sense. The truth about who we are and why we exist is illuminated in the light of this truth. For 21 years, you know my story, 21 years of my own life, it was as if I, those first 21 years, it was as if I walked around blindfolded to the truth, the meaning of life of life, of, of, of heaven and hell, and life and death. And then one day in June 1985, it was as if the blindfold was removed in my bedroom when I prayed. And then the truth of Jesus illuminated my life, my heart. And life began to make sense. What's it all about? It's a song, isn't it, Alfie? What's it all about? Jesus and his glory. John Newton was a slave trader, wasn't he? Who was miraculously converted by the light of the truth that is Jesus. He wrote those famous words, didn't he? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. What's the last line? <coughs> you see. 
by the light of his truth. <coughs> Excuse me. So the world is dark. It's in need of light. And that light is here. I am the light of the world, says Jesus. And this light now shines through whom? Through you and me. We are the light bearers who take his light into the world. Which brings me to my second point here, and final point. A promise given to those who follow. Again, I'll read the verse. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. To follow Christ is to commit ourselves wholly and entirely to him as our Lord, as our Saviour. We <coughs> out of a love for him, submit ourselves to him in every matter of life. We do life with him, not apart from him. We sing the song, abide with me, Lord, abide with me. We seek after his will, we, we pray that prayer, don't we, the Lord's prayer, thy will be done. From the moment we wake up in the morning until we lay down our heads on our pillows. As Christians, we are followers. We are committed to Christ and His ways. And we're committed to become more and more like Him. I read an article this week about the actor Robert De Niro. Do you know him? Quite famous. And how he prepared himself for the role of the hit film Taxi Driver. Has anyone seen it? Taxi Driver? I think we all have to watch it this week. So for a, for a good few months before filming, he, he basically became a taxi driver. Working 12-hour shifts, picking up passengers in his yellow cab in New York City. He endeavoured to immerse himself in a life of a taxi driver. And became one of them. He followed their every move in order in the film to imitate them. As Christians, as followers, we are to immerse ourselves in the life of Jesus. We seek to know more and more about him in order to become more and more like him. The Apostle Paul once wrote to, to Christians in Ephesians 5, Ephesians 5, he said this in verse 1 and 2, follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God, follow God's example as his children. He who follows me, says Jesus in the text, shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. It's a promise. He promises the light of life. What is that? Do you know, do you have a, uh, anyone have a dimmer switch at home? Okay. Must be old fashioned, those dimmer switches then. Dimmer switches at home. You, you turn them, don't you? And the room as you turn them in the right way, it gets brighter and brighter, and you're able to see more clearly. The more we follow, the closer we get to Jesus, the more light, the more insight, the more Christ-like behavior we will have. In that light, doubts and fears will lessen. In that light, your, your faith will, will go from one degree of glory to another, as the Bible says. Life, although often filled with difficult circumstances, will be easier to deal with. Peace in the midst of that light will increasingly prevail in your life. As we walk in this light, seeking after Him, there will be an ever-increasing 
consciousness of his presence. His word says that as we draw near to him, he will draw near to us. As a follower, your path will always be illuminated by the light. And the closer we get to Jesus, the, the closer we follow, the greater the light. He's promised us. As we endeavour to follow him, he's promised us his illuminating light. So let's all this week rejoice that in this dark world that we live in, we have the light of Jesus that leads us, that guides us, his light will shine through. It will shine through us. Uh, as we take the light of his love and his truth in, into this world. And the world, as we've said, needs it so much. And we are the light bearers. And we, as his followers, we bring hope, peace, and love to bear in the lives of the So the world needs its light, his light. Our families need his light, don't they? Our, our communities need his light. Our, our friends and our colleagues at work, they all need his light. So let's shine this way. You know the song, don't we? This little light of mine, Finish it if you like. I'm going to let it shine. So let's do that. Let's be the light bearers this week. Let's follow his light and know the joy of a life that is illuminated by him. I am the light of the world, says Jesus. Whoever follows me will never walk in but we'll have the light of life. Amen. We're going to sing. Sing again. Our music group will come out. Just ponder these things in your own heart. Ponder the fact that your life, it, it's hidden in Christ. Your eyes have been hoping to behold. Maybe you're here this morning and, and you don't fully understand this light. Please come and have a chat with me later. If you've never really come to the light and bow to the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then come and have a chat and I'll gladly pray with you later on. Yeah, let's, let's stand and sing and then Nathan's going to close and pray. I forgot to tell you, but there you go. <laughs> you know now. <coughs>
Jesus, we thank you that it is in your light that we see light, that you have illuminated our hearts to see you, Lord. And we look forward to that day when we will see you, not now as in a glass darkly, but then face to face. And we pray uh, that you would be with us as we go from this place, that you would help us this week, Lord, to be a light where we are, wherever that may be, whether it be at home, in our workplaces, in our schools, Lord, we pray that we would carry your light wherever we go. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Amen.